Hi, I'm Eric Colomb, Curatorial Associate at the Concord Museum, and I'm here at the Old Manson Concord to tell you a love story between Nathaniel Hawthorne and Sophia Peabody. Their love story didn't begin in Concord, it began in Boston and in Salem, but I'd say that their love really flourished here in Concord the three years they spent here at the Old Manse. Now you probably know Nathaniel Hawthorne, he's an American writer, pretty well known for uh, works like The Scarlet Letter. Sophia Peabody might be less known to you. She was an artist uh, and a sculptor and a painter and one of three sisters who were living in Salem, the Peabody sisters. And they were part of this sort of intellectual transcendentalist circle uh, headed by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So he knew those sisters pretty well. And Sophia's older sister, Elizabeth Peabody, really had a network of writers and artists that would come to her, their home and she'd entertain them and she and you know they were cultivating their minds and Elizabeth Peabody invites Nathaniel Hawthorne over in 1838 and that's where he meets Sophia Sophia who's a bit quiet a bit reclusive uh, has claimed that she she would never marry although she told her sisters that she dreamed of a known yet unknown lover so when the two of them meet, it's sort of instant sparks. Hawthorne himself is, is a bit quiet, a bit removed. Uh, he really sees something in Sophia, their kindred spirits. And so they fall in love in, in 1838 and they have a pretty long engagement and it's kept somewhat of a secret. And that's mostly because Hawthorne felt a bit insecure about his place in life. He was not yet the established author we know today. He wanted to build up the, the funds and to be able to support a family. So they kept their engagement a secret for a few years. And, and eventually he was able to uh, make the money he needed to marry her properly. And so they get married in 1842 and they immediately come to Concord on Emerson's invitation. Emerson is trying to cultivate a circle of, of intellectuals in Concord. Uh, he sees the, the newlywed Hawthorns as the perfect addition and rents the old manse to them as a couple. And they will live here for three years. And Sophia had been to the manse before and she thought it was a perfect Eden in her words. She loved this place. And so if you can imagine them embarking from Boston to Concord, they're newlyweds. They had spent a couple of years. Uh, there was a bit of insecurity, a bit of lead up to this marriage, but now it's finally happened and they're beginning their lives together here in Concord at the old manse. And Henry David Thoreau had prepared the garden for them. I mean, it was all set up. They, they both just fell in love with this house and their lives together at this house house. And um, uh, Hawthorne wrote in his study, Sophia painted in her studio. They had this sort of perfect artistic partnership. A and this is a place where their love deepened and matured. And Hawthorne even writes, you know, he went on a trip with Emerson to Harvard, Massachusetts. And upon returning to Concord, he recalled it was the first time that he had ever been home. He had never really had a home before to come back to. And he really thought that the life he had here with Sophia was the home he had always been searching for. And I think the same was true for Sophia. And so the three beautiful years they spent here uh, were memorialized on the house itself. The two of them etched uh, on the glass panes of the window overlooking the North Bridge, a sort of, <laughs> we were here, the Hawthorns were here, this sort of lovely inscription. And so they left their mark on Concord uh, and, and Concord certainly left their mark on them.